Norovirus is the most common cause of gastroenteritis in England and Wales and affects people of all ages. The common symptoms are projectile vomiting and diarrhoea. Other symptoms include nausea, raised temperature, headaches and aching limbs. The incubation period, that is the time it takes from when you are exposed to the virus to when the symptoms start, is usually between 24 and 48 hours. Symptoms last between 12 to 60 hours. Although infection can occur at any time, it tends to be more prevalent during the colder months of the year. Norovirus or winter vomiting disease is a human illness and is highly infectious. People can catch norovirus by direct contact with an ill person or direct contact with their vomit or feces, eating food contaminated by the virus, for example, when someone with symptoms handles or prepares food, by contact with contaminated surfaces, equipment such as toilet seats, doors or tap handles, and less commonly, breathing in the virus when you are in close proximity to an infected person when they vomit. Some places are particularly vulnerable to the risk of infection and outbreaks. These places include any semi-enclosed areas where large numbers of people come together for a period of time in a confined space, such as schools, theatres, cruise ships, concert halls, care homes and hotels. A large group of people coming together increases both the chances of introducing norovirus to that group and the chances of transmitting the virus within that group of people. Prompt action will contain the infection and reduce the number of people affected, prevent an outbreak occurring, reduce disruption to the operation of the business or organisation, minimise sick leave, prevent bad publicity. One of the most effective methods of prompt action is using a body fluid kit to clean up vomit and diarrhoea safely. Step-by-step -step guide to deep cleaning of definite or suspected vomit diarrhoea spillage areas. Step one, identify definite or suspect vomit diarrhoea spillage areas. Following a report of a vomit and or diarrhoea spillage, respond rapidly and ensure that all required cleaning provisions are available, that is cleaning equipment, chemicals and spillage packs. Always make the assumption that a vomit or diarrhoea spillage is infectious. Step 2. Protect yourself from any infection. Wear disposable gloves and an apron. Step 3. Soak up the spillage. Use a spillage pack and follow the instructions. The pack contain granules which soak up the spillage. Use paper towels or an alternative to soak up the excess liquid. Transfer these and any solid matter directly into a waste bag. You can use the disposable bag and scoop scraper which is provided within the spillage pack. Wash hands thoroughly using liquid soap, warm water and then dry them. Step four, clean up the contaminated area within a two meter radius if you have a hard surface. Clean the contaminated area with detergent and hot water using a disposable cloth. Disinfect the contaminated area, including hand contact surfaces with freshly made thousand parts per million or 0.1% hypochlorite solution or bleach and ensure sufficient contact time according to manufacturer's instructions. Dispose of all materials within the contaminated area that cannot be sufficiently cleaned and disinfected. All cleaning activities should be undertaken in a methodical manner so as not to recontaminate decontaminated areas. Dispose of gloves, aprons and cloths into the waste bag. Seal all contents into the bag and dispose in an external waste bin.
Wash hands thoroughly using liquid soap, warm water and dry them. Step 4. Steam clean any soft furnishings. If there are any soft furnishings and fabrics, steam cleaning is advised. Never use a vacuum cleaner. Ensure any mobile equipment is moved within the contaminated area to allow effective deep cleaning. Deep cleaning, other areas where vomit or diarrhea spillages are not known. Concentrate on surfaces that may have been indirectly contaminated by hands and feet, that is, corridors, floors, tables, chairs, walls. If there is no aerosolized vomit or diarrhea spillage known within the area, there should be no need to move large equipment, that is, storage cupboards, bookshelves, etc. Toilets. The frequency of toilet cleaning and disinfection should be increased, and particularly after an episode of vomit and diarrhea. Ensure hand contact surfaces are thoroughly disinfected, that is, toilet flushes, hand wash taps, door handles. Check hand wash provisions, soap, hot water and drying facilities and report any hand wash facilities that are absent from the toilets to the caretaker. Cleaning equipment and supplies. All cleaning equipment must be thoroughly disinfected after use. Record details. It is advisable to record all necessary details of deep cleaning using a record sheet. Prompt action will minimise the spread of infection. It includes cleaning up vomit and or diarrhoea safely, disinfecting contaminated areas and effectively and frequently washing and drying hands with liquid soap, warm water and disposable towels. Always consider that any vomit and or diarrhoea can be contagious and has the potential to make a lot of people ill including your staff and customers, which could cost your business a lot of money. This can disrupt your business as staff need to be off for 48 hours after their last symptom. In addition, the local authority can close down your business and all this generates bad publicity for your business.